Hi, everybody. Just a quick update on Koberger. So Brian Koberger uh, waived his right to a speedy trial. No surprise there. Uh, that, in fact, will cause a delay uh, for his trial. When that date is going to happen is anybody's guess at this point now. Uh, however, it was set for October 2nd. And now that that date's significantly later, okay, it, this is a defense move that we knew initially when they wanted that trial, you know, set for a speedy trial. October 2nd was the date set, and he wanted to get in there. But now he's realizing uh, maybe there's a lot of evidence against him. So let's figure out what the defense may be uh, trying to do here. And again, everything is alleged here uh, that he's uh, the guy. But however, a whole week, uh, or excuse me, last week, um, the county judge, John Judge, denied the defense motion to stay proceedings. Okay? This, is, this now has been the second time that his defense team requested a stay. And the second time it's been denied. So the attorneys last week spent the day discussing DNA evidence used to identify him as the suspect and how DNA databases are also used. It was really interesting that they called the defense attorney expert for the defense to talk about the problems with the DNA evidence. Um, you know, good luck with that one. Uh, remember, DNA was found on the knife sheath that was discovered near Maddie's body at the crime scene, and the investigators used genetic genealogy to link that DNA to Koberger. That DNA was 5.37 octillion times more likely to be Koberger's than a random person from the general publish, uh, population. So what does that mean? I guess we have to go to another planet to find that guy, okay? Along with the DNA, the prosecutors also have Koberger's cell phone data and placed and places White Elantra at the victim's house the night of the murders more than 12 times in the months before the murders. Keep in mind that DNA from the sheath, knife sheath showed a statistical match with a cheek swab taken directly from Koberger after his arrest. Okay. The defense has been pushing for more information on genealogical analysis. And so what have they done? They call four expert witnesses in genetic genealogy, forensic law, and DNA in an effort to try to compel the judge to have the state hand over all investigative information on how the DNA was found at the crime scene and how it was tested and how DNA databases were used in the investigation. So you've got a defense attorney, DNA expert, attorney, testifying for the defense that this DNA is flawed. And then you have this genetic uh, DNA expert as well. Uh, you know, she's a genealogist, botanist by trade, you know, her, her foundation in terms of, you know, her degrees. But she calls herself the genealogy geek. Okay? My question is this, have either one of them done a genealogy test to find out if their family trees were connected in any ways, uh, in yeah. any way to their family. If so, you know, their testimony is going to be really interesting because if I was the prosecutor, that'd be the first question I'd ask the, the DNA geek. Have you ever used your DNA to trace your genetic tree? And if so, how flawed is it? So just going down that lane could be very risky for the defense. Prosecutor Bill Thomas said that they have turned over all discovery that they plan to use in court. What's that mean? He said they had they they are missing one test that is still remaining at the lab at the time of this report. Uh, when they get the results, they will provide it to the defense. So they can't give something that they don't have, and the defense knows that. But when they do get it, they're going to hand it over to them. So Judge John did not make a decision on the DNA. DNA at this point, and it's expected he'll hand down that decision at a later time. With that said, let's talk about Koberger's alibi. The defense said that Koberger has a history of going for drives at night. You know, long summer drives, the top down, the wind blowing, you know, three o'clock in the morning. We all do that, right? And we all do it 12 separate times near a house that just happens to turn out to be a mass murder. 
but they cannot say where he was at the exact time uh, of the morning in the morning of the, the day of the murders. However, he was out for a drive and they admit that. So that's not really a good idea, in my opinion, when you have a digital footprint of his phone shutting off, turning back on, yet showing 12 separate occasions being around that residence. So at this point, the judge has set a date for September 8th for the deadline for Koberger to prove his alibi, and we'll see what the defense is going to do about that. Well, that said, very short, right to the point. We'll see you on the next one. Hard working every day, I'm stressed out 24-7, babe, no, no timeouts Wish we could fly away, you and I Go to our favorite place, oh yeah, yeah Make special memories, together I'll be your company, now and forever Facing a Facing away